What's up, guys? I am here with a very, very special guest today. He's not on right now, but he will be on very soon. He has done many voices for Bioware games, going all the way back to Neverwinter Nights, Baldur's Gate. He recently did like a dozen voices on the Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. He did voices on Dragon Age, Dragon Age 2, uh, Mass Effect, many voices on Mass Effect. But I think we know him best as the male Commander Shepard in the Mass Effect trilogy. This is my interview with the very talented Mark Neer. So Mass Effect pretty much officially ended, what, the first week of March? Yes, sure. actually just before Momocon the same week. Yeah, yeah. with the Citadel the, DLC. The final DLC. Oh man, that was emotional. Yeah, I couldn't actually talk to you about it last time. Uh, I know, I, I remember that. I, and, and I kind of got the idea that, I mean, we we're talking about your favorite DLCs. Mm -hmm. And you said that you couldn't talk about all of them. So I was like, maybe that was his favorite DLC and he just couldn't say. Yeah, that's that's really one of my favorites. Lair of the Shadow Broker was also uh, yeah. a favorite to get to do uh but uh citadel as well it uh it, of course it had like lots of moments for fans of the series and it was yeah. like you know the final final thing so of course there were going to be lots of nice little easter eggs and stuff like that yeah it was fun it was so funny like I, you, you did a good job i, I everyone it's a, such such a great dlc uh are we uh are we having a spoilers free conversation or do you want to talk about actual content or should i let's I don't talk about actual content okay so we'll, so put Put a spoilers warning on this. I mean, with this pretty much being the end of Shepard, uh, mm -hmm. I I want to I wanted to talk a little bit about like the beginning of Shepard with when it comes to you. How does it make you feel that this is pretty much the last time that you're going to be voicing Shepard? Well, of course, there's you know that bittersweet moment <laughs> of saying goodbye to that character. It's a character that's been very very good to me. Yeah. Uh, so people were asking me uh, this when Mass Effect 3 came out, you know, the same question. And I always said, it's like, well, it's not really the end because there's all this DLC to come. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the day that it was like the final, final uh, Commander Shepard uh, voiceover session. Yeah, there, was, there were moments of, uh, I, I don't want to say, said, well, yeah, they were. There were moments of sentiment. There were, I, I got sentimental about, about Shepard and the whole trilogy yeah. and, yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun to be a part of. That said, I do know that I'm going to end up still doing Commander Shepard's voice, uh, but at conventions and yeah. usually voice messages and whatnot. So. Of course. Or endorsing websites or YouTube channels and that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll I think I'll still be doing that voice. <laughs> yeah, I think you will. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, and and uh, you know, uh, wearing that armor because uh, I'll you know yeah. I'll wear that. I'm, I'm hoping to go to DragonCon this year. So cool. Are you going to go to Comic-Con? Comic-Con, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because okay. uh, July is uh, fairly busy. But uh, with any luck, with any luck, we'll, uh, I will get there one of these days, cool. even if it's just as a fan. Because, uh, yeah. you know, as a fan, I should go to Comic-Con at least once. I've been to Dragon Con so many times. So Yeah. I want to go to one of those smaller conventions because Comic-Con, it's closer to me, but it's like, it's I huge. It's pretty overwhelming, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, Dragon Con is also huge. Uh, is but, it really? But, oh, yeah, Dragon Con is gigantic. Uh, and from what I understand, it's not as big as Comic Con, obviously, but it's much more of a fan-based event and yeah. more of a, a, just a big three-day Halloween party, really. And there's cool. so many people, so a much greater percentage of people, I think, in costume. Oh, cool. Uh, That's going to be so much fun. Yeah, and it's more about socializing and partying. And certainly there are you know great panels and things like that, But yeah. you know, and film festival and, yeah, like any con. Uh, of that size, it's uh, yeah. there's a lot of things to see. Cool. So, did you guys have some kind of like, I don't know, party or something after you got you finished your voiceover? After that, I think I had a gig that night actually. So, oh, I, you're I, like, I, bye. <laughs> session for the afternoon. I mean, we obviously there was a big, there had been a big party for like the launch of Mass Effect, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I would assume that the Bioware guys themselves did something because uh, Chris Priestley from Bioware was actually at Momocon with me, oh, and nice. he was he was mentioning that he actually missed the final 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 Mass Effect meeting. You know, oh. and so I would think and he he did mention that manly tears were shed. At that uh, meeting. And, I can imagine. You know, it is, it's the culmination of uh, you know like a decade's work in some yeah. cases. People. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I would think that a few beers got drunk at some point for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think so. 
Um, so I, I certainly had a good time at the launch party for Mass Effect Three. So I saw I saw a few things of it, like pictures and stuff that uh, about that on on Google and and that it, not too much. And I did see some of the Bioware's Bioware guys tweeting and all that. It sounded like it was pretty fun. It was a great time, yeah. And actually, I think I know the was it the photos of me and uh, April Bannigan. Yeah, I think uh, so. She's, she's the lady who plays uh, Kalisa Algelani. Uh, I think oh. there was. <laughs> yeah, the one that went out. There was. She said she wanted a picture of me punching her. Oh, is that the and, one? Yes. Yeah, and I <laughs> only on the condition that we also take a picture of her punching me, and and also tweet that because. Yeah, oh, great. I didn't know that was her. I've seen yeah, that. And I'm it, like, why is he punching? Well, I, I thought it was just a fan that told you. Could you pretend like no, you're it was, punching? It was actually the lady who plays the reporter, and you know, one of my good friends. Like uh, we've been friends for many years. Uh, really? We're both actors in Edmonton, of course. Yeah, and uh, actually, I'm very good friends with her brother. Like her brother was. The best man at my wedding. Oh, cool! So you yeah. knew her before Mass Effect. Oh yeah, I'd known April for decades. Oh, that's awesome. So I've done some theater acting uh, in the past, so I know that when you're given a role, you uh, you have pretty much have to like try to get as much into that role as possible and learn so a lot about that character, so you could feel like you're that person. But how did you do it for Shepard, since he's pretty much determined by the player? Well, that's the thing. That's why it was a challenging role, sort of a unique challenge that you know myself and Jennifer Hale yeah. uh, faced, was creating a character that that is largely going to be determined by the player, Shepard's background, you know, their outlook, you know, whether they're a noble hero or just a ruthless, ruthless yeah. bastard. Uh, so, so that's a fairly broad range. If they end beyond that, like even their class and everything, you know, their race, everything is being selected by the player. So we had to create sort of a base. Shepherd template, uh, okay. and a lot of a lot of lines of dialogue were also going to be used for extreme renegades and extreme paragons. So, uh -huh. so that was a unique challenge. And the one thing that we found to use as the core of the character was Shepard's military background, and the fact okay. that Shepard was like an officer and yeah. and used to giving commands under fire and that sort of thing. So that was the one thing that was consistent through everyone's Shepard. Uh, yeah. You know, no, no matter who your Shepard was, they were always he was a uh, military you know, hero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like you had to create a shepherd for each background, and it's not like you did lines for for specific. Well, there backgrounds. were there was there were lines that were specific to like specific backgrounds, you know, like say the uh, social oh, like, body it, background, and like because this, of course, yeah, where you talk you, to your mom, kind yeah, of thing. Points. and yeah, and uh, so only some versions of Commander Shepard had their parents still alive. Yeah, the spacer. So I, Sometimes you had, yeah, exactly. So sometimes you had that relationship with your mom, and sometimes you didn't. And and then it was also, you know, we didn't voice specific lines in this direction, but you had to kind of color that as well. That when you're interacting with your mother, you might be like a complete renegade character. So <laughs> so we didn't really have, you know, different lines for a paragon dealing with their mother and a renegade. And oh, so, so yeah. okay. So it had to be kind of like neutral. Yeah, you have to go neutral, and in certain cases, yeah. I see. I, I I'm I'm a spacer, so I freaked out when I saw that I got a message from my mom on the Citadel DLC. Oh, yeah. Right. Like, oh my god, <laughs> we're gonna get to talk to her again. I was so excited about that. That was so cool. How does Bioware approach you as a protagonist of the story? Do they give you the whole script to read? Or do they just give you Shepard's nope. lines? Do they explain the story to you as you go? How do they give, give you the idea of what's going on? Well, you never really get you to see your lines before you're actually in your session. Uh, oh. And, you know, what with uh, secrecy and whatnot, and, and also the fact that, you know, things are being written and changed. Uh, you, you basically find out what your lines are as you're getting ready to do them. Uh, and so that means your director is very, very important indeed. And uh, I worked with uh, Caroline Livingstone mm -hmm. and Suzanne Hunka uh, mostly. Suzanne came in uh, for the third game, mm -hmm. uh, but but Caroline did work on that as well. And uh, they give us the context of what these lines are, like what the situation is, what's going on, where in the game this is happening chronologically. Because we also tend to do it out of order chronologically. Like you might be oh. you know, Scenes from nearer the end of the game might be written first before other passes, and and especially uh, like say loyalty missions and that kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. you might main plot stuff and then loyalty mission stuff that's going to be dealt with before that. So they uh, they are the ones that we really depend on, and uh, they're the ones that give us you know emotional and plot context for what's going on. I see. So you get 
you, you pretty much don't know exactly how Mass Effect plays out until you actually see it all, well, all in it, one run. It's sort of like looking at a bunch of pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and knowing that it will be a sailboat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, seeing it, you know, then doing the puzzle, it's like, oh, yeah, I remember this piece. And, yeah. Oh. So, and, you know, I guess I've got a good head for that. Like, I, I, you know, when I was a kid, I'd read comics out of order. And then, you know, be, because we didn't have as good a distribution system when I was a kid, actually. So mm-hmm. you, you might not run across part three of a six part story until yeah. a couple of years after you'd, you'd read the other parts. And so it's just <laughs> fitting all that that kind of stuff together. Yeah. I, I, I'm, improv is kind of like that too, isn't it? Where you're kind yeah. of running blind in this, in some, some sense. Yeah, uh, I would say so. And I'd say in my case, improv came in very handy for yeah. being able to just be dropped into those situations. Yeah, and I can imagine. I, I usually trumpet the values of improv in, in all branches of acting. and They certainly come in handy when you're doing what amount to cold reads of, of uh, scenes like that. Yeah. Okay, so for you as a voice actor, how has Shepard transitioned throughout the three games? How has Shepard transitioned? Like the, yeah, like how, for yeah. you, how, how do you feel that Shepard has transitioned throughout the, the three games? Like, do you feel that Shepard, uh, do you feel like you, you were voicing him differently from, say, Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 3? Yeah, I'd say uh, definitely between from one to three, there's there's a difference in how they approach. Uh, because in the first game, especially, uh, they wanted to keep Shepard's emotional side uh, not necessarily dampened down. But as I was mentioning before, there were some lines that had to apply to both Paragon and mm-hmm. Renegade. So if if I ever got a note on the first game, it was always okay. Flatten it out emotionally. It's got to be a little more, you know, even keeled. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so we had to go back and, and do stuff so it was like that. In the by the third game, and especially in the third game, uh, they were uh, like this was coming from Bioware that they they were like, yeah, you can show more emotion because, and it was a function of the plot as well because yeah. Shepard is being ground down by the war yeah. and by everything that. Uh, he or she has experienced and so for Jennifer and myself they were both uh, willing to let us express the more I guess human side of Shepard cool. uh, that you could see the toll that uh, yeah. everyone's taking that was uh, one of my favorite things yeah and you know like most people I would say lost at least one or two companion <laughs> characters uh, shed many I, tears I know, <laughs> I know that there are you know, people who've done perfect games they never lost anybody <laughs> But yeah, I I know like my renegade especially lost a lot of people in the suicide. <laughs> really, renegade cut corners and did not go in fully prepared. But I guess that's <laughs> the renegade. But, uh. but that meant that yeah, I lost a lot of people. So that's one of the reasons I I think I talked to you about this last time. I'd eventually like to go back and do like another complete run of oh, all yeah. three. Games. But yeah, finding the time to do that is hard. I haven't I haven't even had the chance to play three yet. But I you know I played both one and two over a year after the release. Yeah. Also, it helps me to forget what, <laughs> what <laughs> you know, even though I played, there was enough of a gap, I'd be playing a mission and then event, you know, as I was going through, I'd start to remember, oh yeah, this, and this is how it ends. And yeah, yeah so I don't slightly ahead of myself while playing. Yeah, I get, I, I, that's kind of how I am when I play my first playthrough of, of a game, especially like Mass Effect, I'll play it once and then I need to take like, months before I play it again. So I've only mm-hmm. played two Shepherds. Uh right now I'm on my Fem Shep for my Mass Effect 3, but it took me a long time to start her up again cuz it's just I know how everything is running and it's just like I think I'm going to wait for a little bit. Yeah, you want a little distance to yeah, yeah so to you make don't it feel fresh. So it's a slightly fresher experience yeah. again, yeah. So I assume do you do Paragon and Renegade passes? Uh, I'm doing a Paragon, full-on Paragon Femship, and then my first Shepherd was uh, Paragate, the kind of like a... Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, like so a you've mix done, match. Like, Renegade. Huh? You've never done full Renegade. No, well, I, I did start a Renegade in Mass Effect 2, and I found him hilarious, but it's hard for me to to go, like, evil. Or not evil, but in Mass Effect, it's not so much evil. But... Yeah, no, it's just ruthless or noble, basically. Yeah. Yeah, but it's hard to do. It's it's hard for me to do that. Like uh, I was playing. Fine. Keep in mind, no matter how much of a jerk you are in Mass Effect, you're still saving the universe. Yeah, you could always redeem yourself. <laughs> like I it's saved fair. it though. <laughs> in one way or another. Yeah. Have you ever played Fable? I have. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I, 
most games like uh, I, I do enjoy games like that, like going back to like the old Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. Uh, like game, games where you have a good path and an evil path, or you know, uh, two extremes of alignment. I'll generally do a good and an evil. Oh, okay. And both. I'll do the evil first so that I feel like I'm redeeming myself when I do the good. <laughs> Nice. Like so, I did that like with Fallout. So like the first time I played Fallout Three, I of course destroyed Megaton in exchange for an <laughs> apartment, and you know sat on the balcony and watched as the nuke went off. And I, I even was—I think I was the one who actually pressed the button. And, oh really? Yeah. yeah. No, I, in Fable, I played uh, as a a good guy in Fable One, and then Fable mm-hmm. Two, I was like, I'm gonna go all out. I want like the horns and everything. Yeah. Well, the, but I the, felt so bad, though. It often looks cooler. It's like, if you want a shepherd with glowing orange eyes, you're going to have to... <laughs> have I, to my, my, my Paragate, I do like my Paragate because he, you could still see, like, some scars on him. Yes. It's, it's like, slight renegade. So I like mm-hmm. that. I like that you that he's not, like, clean cut, that he still has some scars. I think it seems, like, a little more uh, realistic. Because, right. I mean, he was brought back from... From the dead, so he's got to have some scars, unless he does that whole like Doctor Chocolate thing. True. Yeah. Oh, the the procedure where you can get rid of. Them. Yeah, I never yeah. wanted to do it though. No. Yeah. Well, especially like my my renegade. It's like no, I'm going for like as glowy, scarry <laughs> renegade as I can. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Although I never even uh, my renegade in particular was uh, he backed the Krogan all the time because he was sort of good friends with Rex oh. and then like Grunt. So. He always backed the crazy. So he was, I guess he wasn't full renegade. There were some situations where he'd. Uh, you got like that much Paragon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's a couple where you're supporting the Krogan where it's not the rene- renegade choice. Yeah. So, yeah. No, yeah. I, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't be able to not support the Krogan. They're, they're just so cool. I love the scenes in the Citadel with Grunt and Rex. Yes. Oh, although I guess that means that both of my Shepherds, when I eventually get around to playing three, both of my Shepherds will be spared killing Morden because, you know, my Paragon obviously is not going to sabotage the Genophage. Yeah. And uh, and my Renegade, who would be the guy that would, he backs the Krogan. So right. I'll never have to kill Morden. Oh. Only, that, <laughs> only that one time in the booth. Uh. Well, well, you you might even be able to save Morden in your Renegade, right? You were telling me yes. that last time. No, but uh, yeah, the, I, I think that's if you decide to destroy the Genophage or fake the oh, fake so you would have uh, to destroy it. And then I think you have to have like super high renegade. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'd have to destroy the Genovage. And I, I, I remember we recorded this that you can actually convince Morden uh, that this is the right thing, and then he goes to work on the Crucible, and so he becomes a war asset. Oh. Uh, so I th- and I think he brings a fair amount of scientific knowledge to uh, to that. So. So he doesn't uh, hate Shepard then afterwards. Well, I, yeah, he you managed to. I think you have to have a high renegade rating, uh, and you you managed to convince him of the that it's like the uh, the Krogan just can't. We can't allow them to replicate un, unchecked. Uh, mm-hmm. So I do know we recorded that again. I haven't done the playthrough, so I don't know if that is in the game. But it is. Uh, it is an option. I think it is. I I think I saw a few people saying. I thought they were messing with me, but now that you're saying that you recorded it, then yeah. Even if it meant saving Morden, I wouldn't be able to, to, to screw the the Krogan over. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Morden. Yeah. Oh. Well. Okay. Screw it. Oh, did did Bioware ever reuse lines? Because I know uh, Shepard says a lot of repeats a, repeats a lot of lines. No, that's the funny thing. That's why uh, you know Jennifer and I both joke that I should go is Shepard's catchphrase, and that's why you know it had, essentially has become that for all intents and purposes. Uh, be, so you just because... always had to say it. Yeah. So we. <laughs> Every time that he said that he or she says it in the game, we would say it, you know, in a different recording. I mean, they could have saved money but <laughs> they say it once, it but was uh, they did fresh. not. Not they wanted every "I should go" to have its own nice. Well, I should go ness. Do, do you ever hear that line and think, uh, "Do I really sound like that?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose any time you hear your recorded voice, it's like, I guess I'm used to it by now. Yeah. But uh, and and it wasn't always I should go. There was like I have to go and I should get going now. And you know, there were a few variants on it. I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Because you never do. <laughs> no, you never do. You never do. <laughs> I love that yeah, line. That that sure was funny. Sure you, sure you, right? <laughs> What's what are you gonna miss most about voicing Shepard? Uh, well, I mean, it was always so cool to, uh, walk into the booth and hear like the other actors, you know, like, uh, I think I mentioned to you before what a fan I was of Lance Henriksen. Yeah. Uh, 
ever since you know like I, when I was a kid when I saw like Aliens and Near Dark and I'd always been a big fan of his. Yeah, he's so awesome. getting to you know put on the headphones and hear his voice do and and do the scene with him uh, that you know. I'll, uh, I, I hope to work with him again at some point. But, you know, the guys like him and Keith David and Martin Sheen, yeah. uh, that was really cool. That was, that was a lot of fun. I also, uh, let's face it, the paycheck, but <laughs> 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 let's be perfectly honest here. Yeah. <laughs> You're like that whole Lance David. Yeah, that... <laughs> I, I did mention this character was quite good to me. Because, yeah, it's, just, it, it's just in the sheer amount of dialogue that is recorded. Yeah. And uh, it was one of the first games that, I think the first game to voice the protagonist uh, in an RPG like that. Yeah. Because of, of course, up to that point it had been text. So just the sheer amount of dialogue uh, necessitated a lot of recording sessions and yeah. You know, yeah. And then so, you did so many others too. Yes, that's true. Like the uh, Blasto and the Vorcha, yeah. if you Cal, all those guys. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I would say, uh, I'll, I'll miss, you know, the fans and whatnot, but hopefully I'll get to continue to see the fans because I'm doing conventions and stuff now. And, oh, yeah. uh, yeah. So, uh, so that, that part of it will continue and I'm very glad that it will. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I was like, well, it's, it's pretty much the end, but I mean, it, it, it I think Mass Effect is, is just going to go down in history. I mean, the fans are so passionate about it. And people, people thought that I was going to stop making Mass Effect videos. They were like, so that's it? I was like, no, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I, I don't think I'm giving anything away. And the Bioware, I think, has, has come out and said that, you know, they're going to do future games set in the Mass Effect universe. Yeah. And yeah. it would be crazy of them not to just because it is such a fully fleshed out, fully realized fictional universe you know, that can yeah. stand up to almost any other uh, in fandom in terms of its detail and yeah, how much, uh, yeah. And and certainly how passionately people feel about it. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see more games set in that universe. You can you can be guaranteed. And of course, you know, books and comics and yeah, and and fan made projects as well. Yeah, that's that's gonna be awesome. What was the first thing that you thought when you saw that Shepard has a clone? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> when I yeah when they the. Uh, uh, let me in on that. I was just like, ah, that is excellent and comic booky, and you know, I'm a big comic book fan, so I was, I'm certainly up for the evil clone storyline. Really? And of course, I knew that I would get to voice the evil clone, so I'm equally happy uh, to get to like an an all out evil version of Shepard. That's yeah. pretty fun. Awesome. Uh, I did, I did have one idea. Like this, you know, of course, by the time it gets to me, like we're we're recording things, uh, mm -hmm. so. The, my bright idea we came far too late, but <laughs> this was the one that I was just like, oh, no, it's brilliant. We could do it this way. Uh, was what if Cerberus had reversed the X and Y chromosome? Oh, uh, my on, God. That's oh. my idea. <laughs> For so Jennifer have, Hale and Mark Mir, right? Yeah, you'd have, like, <laughs> if your shepherd was male, there'd be like the evil female clone of Shepard. And if it was a femme shep, it would be an evil male clone. And that was uh, I'm sure someone will do that on YouTube eventually, like just cut it together. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, that was my, like, oh, what a genius idea this would be to finally get, you know, male shepherd versus female shepherd. But, know, uh, no, so that cool. didn't happen. That didn't happen. But it was, it was fun to do, uh, definitely fun to do the evil clone, as I say. Oh, man. I was about to, I was going to bring that up. I was like, oh, I've got to give him my brilliant idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had thought of that. <laughs> but yeah, actually. No, that, that was the first thing that occurred to me. It was like, huh. My, I read my, two comic books. My brilliant idea was a sex change. That the clone went through a sex change. Oh, it like in reconstruction. Oh, I, yeah, it uh, just decided to be a female. <laughs> that would probably be easier to just reverse the X Y chromosome, I think right? So, you know, yeah. we're building this clone from the ground up anyway. Why, why build it and then rebuild? It? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions that some of my subscribers sent to me for you. Sure. Uh, first one is by Smackdown two zero zero nine nine. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, what has been your favorite moment of the entire trilogy? Uh, the favorite moment? That's hard to pick. Um, yeah. oh, wow, because there's lots, certainly. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of favorite moments came in three. And uh, if I had to only pick one, hmm, hard, very hard to pick. But the, uh, the final scene with Anderson. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, that was a really great one. And and Keith David had recorded before me, so like I had his voice. And, oh, that's so cool. 
yeah, it was uh, it was great to do that scene. That, that uh, must have been so emotional. Yeah, yeah, it was because uh, yeah. Although again, as I say, it wasn't the the final final thing like yeah. Citadel. Was. Uh, it was you know the culmination of the game and uh, and to get to do a scene with him like that and the writing in that scene is fantastic as yeah. well. So he did a good job with that scene. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Um, uh, and then there are, are also favorites like you know getting to voice against myself uh, you know the fun thing like that was always fun like you know the scenes with Nif Cal yeah. where I'm playing Shepard and the, the biotic god Volus you weren't you weren't doing it at the same time though were you no 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 I just I, I okay. did like the Shepard lines first or actually I don't know I can't remember which ones I did first uh -huh. I think it must have been Shepard because we'd usually save uh, other characters until the end of the day okay so you but you would listen to yourself mm -hmm. okay yeah so like I had Shepard in my in oh, my cool. Set when I was doing Nifty Cal. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so this is from Alex the Hunted. He says, if you could voice a different main character in Mass Effect, who would it be? Oh, well, <laughs> I'd probably pick one of the bad guys. Really? But, but the thing is that, the, you know, we had such great actors playing the villains. It's like, well, who am I going to be arrogant <laughs> enough to think I can replace? It's like, <laughs> but yeah, I was leaning towards, towards bad guys. So, yeah. Like, and again, like so I could say elusive man, but then it's like, oh yeah, I'm better than Martin Sheen, or I think the <laughs> game would, I think the game would be served better by having me instead of Martin Sheen. No, no, I. I it would be I, fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. Sure. Yeah, right. Uh, maybe one where the elusive man put his brain into a shepherd clone. And, <laughs> and, yeah. You should write for Bioware. You're right. <laughs> shepherd would have had a chimpanzee sidekick if I'd had my. Side. No, not really. But that was always the joke that when when I couldn't divulge information about upcoming games, I'd always say, you know, two words: chimpanzee sidekick. Did anybody ever ever believe that? Uh, I, I'm sure no one ever actually believed it. But, You'd be uh, surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I think that could have worked. He could be, you know, that would have been hilarious. Like, like a inst I, his head. <laughs> so, but so are he's, there, he's are super intelligent, but. <laughs> Are there chimpanzees in Mass Effect? Are like pijacks? Uh, well, no. I'm, I assume unless chimpanzees are extinct at that point, that I they, don't know. they they could make that happen. Oh, totally. Of course, <laughs> it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how well it would have sold. Yeah, you did have a robot dog. It was like, oh, why not a chimp? I know, right? Maybe I just enjoyed BJ and the bear too much as a kid. <laughs> Okay, so Woody Pegasus asks, uh, which of the Mass Effect voice actors have you met? This person says that they've always hoped you were best friends with Brandon Keener. <laughs> uh, Brandon, I have not met in person. I did a, like a Skype thing with him. Uh, oh, really? Yes, uh, at launch night, actually. And so that was kind of like the first time that we met. Oh, screens. yeah, on the, in the, that one, was it GameStop? Yeah, I think it, they were in a GameStop. In a, I was I was here in Edmonton, like doing a similar thing, like uh, a big signing yeah. uh, with you know fans and lots of people in costume and stuff like that. And they were they were at the LA one. Uh, he and Jennifer, mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah, I have I have not met Brandon, uh, okay. but I guess we've talked to each other. We've we've seen images of each other and spoken <laughs> to each other. Uh, and uh, Jennifer, I have met. Uh, we first met at EXPCon in Florida, and that would have been, I think, in. Uh, yeah, late 2011, and that was so. That was the first time that we were actually in the same room oh, together. Wow. We sort of chatted a little bit before that, but yeah. uh, but that was the first time face to face. Uh, let's see, Seth Green, I've met. Cool. Uh, but uh, funnily enough, I didn't meet Seth uh, as a result of the game. It was uh, it was good, you know, at a social event because uh, we both know Nathan Fillion. And, oh, cool. And uh, my wife and I were actually staying with Nathan in L.A. at the time, and he'd invited us all out uh, to this event, and Seth and his wife were there as well. And so luckily for me, I had the in of being able to go, actually, Seth, we've worked together before. <laughs> no. So, and yeah, and so we had a nice little chat about Mass Effect, and he was, he was actually like, you know, he's been involved in a lot of high-profile things that have very dedicated fan bases, yeah. uh, obviously. But he was commenting on how dedicated the Mass Effect fans were. And that he'd never seen, you know, anything like this for a game, oh. uh, and uh, and I guess it was one of the game, one of the first games that people really emotionally invested in, yeah. uh, characters and the storylines. Yeah, I think so too. To the extent that they have for this. Yeah, because I think I mean all Bioware games have like 
such great character development, but there's just something special about Mass Effect and Dragon Age. But mm-hmm. I think Mass Effect just has, especially three, because they add more of that banter and more of that commu- yeah. like communication with the characters. So you just like grow to love them and like your friends. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, where was I? So Jennifer Seth. and Seth. Mm-hmm. And uh, I met Courtney Taylor, uh, who plays Jack. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. We met at the GenreCon in uh, Ontario. Cool. Uh, and that was, uh, that was just last fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lance, uh, of course, Lance Henriksen. Uh, I met him uh, at DragonCon one year again through uh, through Nathan Fillion, uh, and I wasn't a guest that year. I was uh, I was just there as a fan, but Nathan was a guest, and so I was kind of hanging out with him in in the Hall of Fame as uh, people were getting their eight by tens and markers out, <laughs> and uh, so I was in there before the general public was, and again had the opportunity to go, uh, Mr. Henriksen, uh, <laughs> Andrew Shepard in that game you you did. Do you remember in that game? Uh, and he, <laughs> in that one game. <laughs> That remember that game, uh, and uh, yeah, he was very very nice, uh, really nice guy. Uh, we had a nice chat about voice acting, and we've met subsequently uh, at the Calgary Expo. Uh, he was there last year, and so was I as guests. Cool. Um, who else uh, have I crossed paths with? Uh, DC Douglas uh, and I. We've uh, we've done some Skype interviews together. Oh, nice. And we both uh, supported uh, gamers for Sandy Hook. Yeah, I remember that. I remember he was part of that too. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's uh, he's a very nice fellow. Uh, so we've uh, we've chatted, but again, never been in the same room together. Mm-hmm. Uh, just at Momocon, I met Steve Bloom for the first time. Oh, uh, right, you told me. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he's he's a great guy, very nice. And I, I, like Jennifer, I was a fan of his before we worked together uh, from his animation work. Yeah, he's done so many things. Yes, yeah. Specifically for me, it was like obviously like the comic book stuff. Like uh, he's Wolverine. Wolverine, and, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Jennifer, of course, is uh, in a lot of DC Comics uh, cartoons, like uh, JLU and... I heard. I, 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 haven't, I, th- I haven't watched any like superhero uh, cartoons since like Batman the Animated Series, Superman. Oh, I, th- I think you'd like uh, Justice League Unlimited because it's by Bruce Timm. It's like the... Oh, it's, so the it's same the same... Design. Yeah, so it's the same design, that kind of you know, broad shoulder yeah. or jawed design. Kind of, yeah, I really like that, uh, that style. Uh, and so that's that's just JLU uh, is it comes directly out of Batman the animated series and Superman the animated series. Oh, cool! I should check that out. They're they're not running anymore, right? No, they've uh, they've finished, and you can get them all. Uh, you can oh. get them all on. I'm, I'm clearly advertising for them. You can get them all on DVD and uh, download. Okay, uh, cool. I will. <laughs> and the fine, the fine work of Jennifer Hale as uh, as Zatanna. She's uh, Giganta. I think she's Killer Frost in that as well. Oh wow! Yeah, so a lot of characters, and she's in. Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which is another favorite cartoon of mine. Cool. I've never seen that. Uh, it's it just started a couple of seasons ago. They're, they're actually, sadly, they're shelving it uh, to make way for a new Avengers cartoon, which is more in, key, in line with the movie, I think. Oh, really? Huh. I did hear that they might preserve the continuity of, uh, of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and I hope they do, because I really enjoyed that series. And uh, Jennifer plays uh, Ms. Marvel on that. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, uh, oh, sorry, we were, we were going through the list of people I, from Mass Effect that I've met. Uh, of course, everybody, all the Edmonton actors. Uh, mm-hmm. So April Bandigan, who plays uh, Kalisa Al-Jelani. Oh. And uh, Jeff Page, who is Conrad Werner. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, he, Jeff, again, an old friend of mine. So we got, it was always fun nice. doing Conrad Werner scenes because it's Jeff. And, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, many of uh, my other friends uh, have done uh, smaller roles. Uh, my friend John Elliott, he's played a lot of folks. He plays uh, Glyph, actually, in... The oh. Citadel uh, DLC. Only in the Citadel DLC? Well, I, th- I, I assume he's been Glyph's voice. Actually, yeah, he's been Glyph's voice for the okay. whole Okay. Yeah. I like Glyph. Yes. But uh, actually, it was when we were doing Citadel was the first time that I heard uh, him recorded as Glyph. Oh. And it was just like, oh, yeah, hey, that's John. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see, who else? Um... Oh, actually, my wife, uh, Belinda Cornish, actually. Uh, oh, <laughs> she, <laughs> yes. She plays uh, Ranathanoptis. Uh, she's the Asari scientist that you encounter in one and two, uh, and she also does like many other voices throughout the series. Oh, she's th- actually the very first voice that you hear in the first game. Yeah, so she, I, re- I remember she, you told me that. that... Yeah, she's the Alliance computer. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So she likes to joke that Edie stole her job, <laughs> <laughs> but she continued. She continued to do uh, many other voices uh, throughout the course of the series. She's in Citadel as well. Really. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, oh, uh, Rana McIntyre actually. Uh, I should mention she's oh, right. uh, she's not a voice. She is the face model of yeah. uh, Morinth and Samara. Yeah, and uh, she actually uh, was at Dragon Con with me last year in costume, and she uh, she gets credit for doing the you know cosplaying as your character uh, thing before I did, and oh. she like her costume is perfect. You know, obviously she does a fantastic job on the makeup. She like, looks uh, amazing. She has a great appliance that was made for her by the Mad Masker, I think, is the right. name of the person who made it. And uh, But she, of course, does a great, because you never see the seam. Like, she does a great job blending it, the makeup. It's always impeccable. And, I'm going to uh, be getting those uh, those the, the pictures of you and her, actually. Yes, we did a, we actually, at Dragon Con last year, we did a photo session with, of both of us in costume as our characters. And, yeah, she, uh, she tweeted me. She was like, I'm going to be sending, I was like, Really? <laughs> yeah, I just I just signed those and sent them off to her actually. Yeah, so I'm like super excited about that. Thank Along you. with your poster, which you know oh. I, I was going to send it weeks ago, but I didn't get to it until I got. <laughs> Don't worry so, about it. Thank you. I appreciate it. No worries. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I hope I'm not forget. Oh, of course, Raphael Sabarge. Oh, you you've, you've met him. I have met him. We did, we oh, did cool. panels at uh, Dragon Con together last year. Nice. Yeah, and that, but again, that was the first time. So many of many of the folks that uh, I've worked with for years, uh, I meet at conventions for the very first time. So you've met quite a few then. Yeah, a, fa a fair number. Raphael and I are both going to be at uh, the London Comic Con together in May. Oh, cool! That sounds and, cool. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, let's see, Kimberly Brooks, I've not met yet, but uh, uh, the same lady handles her and Raphael's and my convention dates. Uh, Jackie Day, she's uh, she sort of books conventions, and for us, and uh, so I, I'm hoping that I meet Kimberly soon at some point in the cool. future. So Ali Hillis, you've never met? I've never had the pleasure. I've never had the pleasure. I hear she's very nice. Jennifer speaks very highly of her. Yeah, she she seems like a really cool person. Vorcha squad mate or a Volus squad mate? Oh, hard to pick. <laughs> <laughs> it have to be both. It's like, why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> 